guys, today's video is sponsored by the OneFootball app. If you haven't done it already, head down to the description before this video starts, click the link and download it completely free of charge on iOS or Android. Alright guys, how you doing? Welcome to episode 14 of the Charlton Athletic Career Mode. Now before this one starts guys, every now and then I do like to just nudge you in the direction of the Charlton Athletic Career Mode entire playlist just in case this is the first ever episode you're watching. So make sure you head down to the description and check that out if you are joining me for the first time in this series today. Day. Now, we do have a little bit of a week to clear here, so let's advance to our next game. As you can see before we do that, actually, down here in the table, we are on equal points, as we discussed in, in plenty of depth last time, with Sunderland, who are our main rivals right now to try and get into that top two. Scunthorpe at the moment running away a little bit with the league. They are five points clear of both Sunderland and Cholton, so we know what our objective is here. We know we need to catch these two teams. First job, Sunderland, and then hopefully second job Scunthorpe in order to top this league as soon as possible. Have we got the minerals? Let's find out. So our next game, guys, is against Doncaster Rovers. But just before we start talking about that game, we do have this unfortunate player conversation initiated by Billy Clark. I'm a big fan of him in real life, but in the current way that FIFA is set up, unfortunately, when you've got an older player who's like 66 rated, they're just not going to be any use to you other than maybe like one season. So unfortunately, it kind of works for us that Billy Clark wants to be sold because soon enough his ratings are going to start dropping off and that means his his sort of monetary value is going to go down. So Billy Clark, we may look to sell uh, probably in the summer after this season is completed, whether we go up or not. But guys, we have this game against Doncaster. It's away from home, a very difficult fixture. Where are Doncaster in the league? Let's have a look. They're actually 22nd. That makes me think that we can sim this and at least get a point. But maybe that's dangerous territory. Let me just let me just work out what I want to do here. Right, so I've just come over to the calendar. And the game that I definitely want to play for this episode is going to be this one right here. The home fixture on the 9th of March against Portsmouth. We love a tie against Portsmouth. We beat them at Fratton Park. And we're looking to get the double over them this season. So I think we can sim this, uh, this game against Doncaster. Let's just go ahead and check the squad is all right. And then we'll get into the game. Right, so I'm pretty happy with the squad. I'm going to go ahead and sim this game against Doncaster. We've got our pretty much... As I always say, strongest 11 on the field. Patrick Bauer quite close to returning from injury. They've actually missed a penalty in the second minute there. But Reese Oxford, Lyle Taylor puts us up. 1-0 uh, to Charlton at the moment and it's about 30 minutes played. I was going to say Reese Oxford has made his name. Oh no, they've just equalised and it's right with the goal on the 35th minute for them and it's going to be a tough game to try and nick a goal but Lyle Taylor does it. Of course Lyle Taylor does it. Our star man puts us 2-1 up and are we going to be able to hold on to this league? Five minutes left and there we go. Full-time whistle goes. We've got the away victory against Doncaster Rovers. Very, very good result despite the fact that they are quite low down in the table. We like to take three points away from home. Now it just remains to be seen. Oh, actually, I've just seen there on the on the, on the the right-hand side, Cole Robinson's Oxford United have defeated Scunthorpe. He's done us a favour, mate. It's Agent Robbo doing us a, a proper big favour there. Jamie Mackey with the goal in the 88th minute for them. So that is really good in terms of cutting the gap on Scunthorpe. But how about Sunderland then? They won again. They literally won again. We're still third after that away victory. Crazy times. Doncaster probably down. Yeah, they've gone down a place, I think, in 23rd now. But all we care about is up here. Scunthorpe leading the way still, but only by two points now. If you remember a few episodes ago, they were literally like something crazy, like 14 points ahead or something stupid. Look how much we've narrowed that gap down. There are only 11 games of the season to go. And that's taken me by surprise, that fact, because I just didn't realise that we were coming towards the sort of latter stages of the first season, which is good. It's exciting. We're around about where we want, where we want to be. And one win with Sunderland or Scunthorpe dropping points is going to put us in those automatic spots. Let's train some of our geezers right now. Uh, I'll just simulate them. Let's hope that they get these ones. Oh, Haribo didn't do very well. Deke still did, though, uh, as did Tariq Fosu, and actually as did Grant and Lanes. But no rating raises quite uh, quite yet. They will be coming very soon, I, I hope, at least. Uh, actually, we've just turned a new month there. So I wonder if that means if anyone's gone up a rating. Let me check. Uh, as far as I can see, nobody has gone up or down a rating, which is weird for a, for a new month, but hey-ho. There we go. We've just pulled a very, very important win out of our backsides against Doncaster away from home. And now for this huge game coming up 
against Portsmouth. Let's just check what these office notifications are real quick. Uh, we've got press conference, press conference, and we do have Mr. Bell, who comes back with a monthly scouting update. I always like to see these. Let's have a look at this uh, report. So uh, I thought we got, oh, I was looking in the wrong place. So yes, the potential of Chen Yang, still very, very good. Uh, Chen Yang is a defensive minded midfielder it looks like central midfielder which is actually an area that we do need to definitely sort of strengthen so I'm actually definitely going to sign this guy Chen Yang he is in the youth squad um, Fang Ren this guy is left over from last time oh, I've just seen I've just seen this guy's name <laughs> <laughs> I think I might have to I think I might have to sign this guy just because of that name that is unbelievable when the random name generator in FIFA comes through ha <laughs> sorry <laughs> I really do enjoy that all right so we've got Bang Wang <laughs> Bang Wang who can play right midfield left midfield striker and possibly also, <laughs> possibly also central midfield anyway let's let's grow up uh, let's grow up I'm a big boy uh Zian Guan oh no Zian Guan. I mean, these these names are incredible right now. Uh, Zian Guan and Bang Wang probably <laughs> probably Bang Wang's better actually. Um, they play in similar positions. He's a little bit more defensive minded. Guan uh, Feng Ren, by the way, let's let's address these two first. So this guy, I don't think we're going to need him. He's only a 78 potential overall. Feng Ren, uh, I'll leave him it. I'll leave him in there again for one more more month. I think uh, Guan, I don't think we're gonna we're gonna need him, but I'll let him just sit there for another month. Uh, just because he's 15 and, and things could change. Bang Wang, however, um, I'm feeling to promote this guy. Yeah, I mean, I have to. How could I not promote Bang Wang? So Bang Wang is in the... Uh, is in the. Uh, do you know what? Next segment. Oh, all right, so let's compose ourselves. Let's get into this game against uh, Portsmouth. And I've just noticed actually over here that there's no Charlton player this month on the uh, League One Player of the Month February shortlist. I think last month... It was Forster Kasky, who I actually didn't even mention to be on our personal uh, Player of the Month list. Um, oh, and actually, that's reminded me that we're going to need to award a player for Player of the Month in February. I'm not being funny, but it could well be Lyle Taylor yet again. Although there's one other player that before Lyle Taylor scored that brace, uh, I was going to award it to. And do you know what? I think I still am. So guys, let's have a look. He's got the Goal of the Month as well. And I'm just going to say it in a double little barrel here. Tariq Fosu, he's raised his rating by four since the beginning of the season. He's played very, very well recently. And again, so unfortunate that this guy up here, Lanis, hasn't got one yet. And I'm sure he will, guys. But this month it is going to be Tariq Fosu. He's come up with important goals, important plays, important assists. And uh, he's got that special something, as it says there on his status. Um, let's have a look and see what his rating is. Apparently in League One, it's a 6.9, so it's nearly a 7. I would, I would probably say he's been playing for me a little bit more than that reflects, but um, a little bit better than that reflects, sorry. But yeah, Tariq Fosu, my player of the month, guys, for February. Well played, Tariq. And a very, very, very close second yet again was Mr. Lyle Taylor, who is coming through in a 7.6 rating. Uh, in League One this season. Only a 67 rated player. Probably one of our worst rated players in the squad. But just absolutely prolific for us. Well done, Lyle. And of course, the goal of the goal of the month then is going to be this sort of bicycle kick effort from Tariq Fosu. Lovely, lovely finish. And very, very similar to the one that we awarded last time for, for again, Lyle Taylor. But guys, let's move on now to this game against Portsmouth. We've composed ourselves. We've awarded the goal and player of the month. And now it's time to welcome Pompey to the Valley. So let's do that. Let's get the win. Here we go. Big day at the Valley. Cholton Athletic in third place. Equal points with Sunderland. Still not being able to catch up on that goal difference that Sunderland have holding over us. Portsmouth weren't even in that table there. So I imagine they're... I didn't actually check, I should have checked, but I think they're about, I think they're actually near the relegation zone, if not in it. Um, you probably will have seen when I checked Doncaster's position earlier, roughly where they are. But anyway, let's have a look at the lineup of Charlton Athletic, followed by our guests, Portsmouth. Here we go, as usual, then Dylan Phillips in goal, Deke Steel at right back, Oh, at left back over Page right now, Pierce, captain, central defence next to Reese Oxford, the six month in uh, low knee, sorry, or is it three month? I don't know. I think it's six month. Anyway, besides the point, Joe Rebo and Foster Kasky midfield, Lanez and Fossu on the wings, Colin Grant and Lyle Taylor get the nod up front for me, and it's McGilver, Mag that keeper, Thompson, the captain at right back, Burgess, Escobar and Brown make up the rest of the back line. Naylor, I believe, on the right-hand side of midfield. 
Um, oh, actually, they've gone for a 4-3-3, very cheeky in League One. Naylor, Dennis and Thompson in midfield didn't manage to catch their front three, but again, you can pause the video as always. Let's get into this game at the Valley then, try and get the three points off Portsmouth, and hopefully, I oh know we're giving the ball away, but hopefully by the end of this game, we'll have three points in the bag and we'll be able to overtake one of those teams that are currently ahead of us. Here comes Naylor. Naylor lays it back, gives the ball away to Joe Arriba. Joe Arriba is going to find Tariq Fosu with the through ball. And it's going to be Colin Grant making a perfectly timed run here. Here's Colin Grant. Is anybody going to make the run for him? Lyle Taylor in the box for him, surely. And it's going to be a corner ball for Charlton. And it was just not quite good enough, the end, the end product there from Colin Grant. But we have worked a corner here. Let's see if we can uh, whip this into a dangerous area. It's Jason Pierce rises high and away from Portsmouth. Oh, here come Portsmouth. And they've got the goal at his near post. Dylan Phillips all of a sudden beaten and Dylan Phillips not very good performance there at his near post. Dennis with the goal, the number 18 and Portsmouth take the lead within 10 minutes or within 11 minutes actually. At the Valley, not what we wanted to see boys and girls is it now? Look at this, a deflection fell straight into the path of Dennis who just put his laces through that and sent it in to the back of the net beyond Dylan Phillips and Dylan Phillips, yeah that should be covered that space there, really really should. And uh, I'm quite excited actually to potentially get a new keeper or at least improve Dylan Phillips' rating in the future. Here he comes, uh, Lyle Taylor out to the wing to Lanes. Lanes holding the ball up to Deke Still. Deke Still, is he going to find a cross? He does. It's going to be, oh, a great finish from Tariq Fosu. I think it is. Yes, it is. The number 11, the man who's just been awarded our player of the month, carries on his form into the month of March, goes to the camera, slides on his belly, and Tariq Fosu puts the addicts, I was about to say 1-0 up, but he doesn't, he equalises for the addicts, and puts us right back into the game early on, that is the exact response we wanted, very, very cheeky finish there, side foot, powerful as well from Tariq Fosu, let's see from this angle, yeah, really nice take there just before it bounced and the keeper had no chance, mate. Here's Dennis. Dennis puts a ball in. Dylan Phillips. Sorry, he's just been bundled into his own net. If that's a goal, is that a goal? No, it can't be. That's got to be a foul. That was ridiculous. Anyway, let's carry on from this goal kick and see if we can initiate an attack. Lanez manages to keep the ball there to force the Kasky. You can see runners. It's going to be Lyle Taylor through to Colin Grant. Grant's got to score his goal for us. There's Colin Grant's goal. And it's taken such a long time for him to actually... I don't know, get, to in some, get into some goal scoring form and there's the one that breaks his duck. He hasn't scored for a long, long while, Carlin Grant. And the young striker, who is improving his rating every single week or every single month, I should say, uh, he has managed to bag a goal for us. Perfectly timed ball from none other than his strike partner, Lyle Taylor. Great run and decent finish as well. Just sort of drove it into the roof of the net there near post and beats the keeper to put Cholton 2-1 one, uh, one up, I should say. Carlin Grant... Welcome back to the world of goal scoring to Lanez. Oh, Lanez tried to find Deke still, Deke still inside. Is it going to be another goal for Colin Grant? It may well be. And it is. Is it onside or offside? Oh, it's just about offside. I think that was a very, very close call there. And the runs that this guy is making in behind the Portsmouth defence are very dangerous. Let's have a look at this. Just release. Oh, my God. It's like a, it's like a shoulder and an arm offside very unfortunate from uh, from Carlin Grant maybe if he wasn't pointing for the run he could have stayed onside oh no it's a beautiful ball through to oh wow didn't realize he was going to take that shot it was actually not too far away from Dennis but I don't know why he didn't just run with it then maybe he didn't fancy himself against who was that chasing back well it was only Jason Pierce not the fastest player and uh, just wide of the post, Dylan Phillips didn't even react there, so can't have been that close. In a dangerous position here for Tariq Fosu. Earl finds him. Fosu's going to whip the ball in now. It's Lyle Taylor. Heads it. Oh, Lyle Taylor. That has to go in, mate. That really has to go in. It was pretty much a free header. And uh, maybe a little bit too much on the cross. Tiny bit too much on the cross from Tariq Fosu. But, you know, he made contact. And when you make contact with loads of space like that, you want to see the net bulging. But unfortunately, it doesn't. And we're going to probably go into halftime now. There goes the halftime whistle, guys. And the score is 2-1 to Cholton at halftime. Could have been 3-1 if that header just now from Lyle Taylor had gone in. I'm feeling like we've bounced back really well from going a goal down early on in this game. And Colin Grant has finally broken his duck, which for me is just hugely pleasing. I'm hoping now that we can see some halftime scores, we can. Scunthorpe losing at home to Bristol Rovers. Great news for us. Uh, what about Sunderland? Where are they? I can't see them on there at the moment. Maybe they're not playing today because I can't see them unless I'm being blind. No, I, I don't think they are. I'll kill myself in editing if, I, uh, if I've missed them there. But I don't think I have. And currently, I think we would be 
potentially top of the table. Here comes Joe Rebo. Joe Rebo finds Forster Kasky. Forster Kasky is going to find somebody in the middle who's going to knock it over here to Tariq Fosu. Tariq Fosu with a dummy. We're going to try and work this back inside. It's Lyle Taylor. Lyle Taylor over here to Lanes. Hopefully Lanes with the goal. Lanes puts us 3-1 up. It's onside. They called for offside. Lanes in all kinds of space there. And he gets another goal for us. Lanes and Fosu, our wingers, are really everything. Epitomising everything that Charlton are, are doing well, really, at the moment. Nice little celebration. Lyle Taylor found him. Uh, I can't remember if Lyle Taylor was the last person to find him but uh, who got the assist. But anyway, no, let's have a look here. It was Lyle Taylor who knocked it to... Who's that? Is that Forster Kasky? Who then found Lanez. And then Lanez stuck it in the back of the net with his left foot. Nice finesse. And the number 13 puts us 3-1 up. A much more comfortable lead. And that was a very, very nice finish indeed, Mr. Lanez. We're going to make a sub now. And the youngster, Zhu, comes on for his first game that I've physically played with him. So I'm going to see what this guy's all about. I know he's not the fastest. And I've put him in central midfield on for Joe Rebo. So let's see what he can do. And Pittman, the number eight, very dangerous player indeed, comes off the pitch for Portsmouth. And on comes somebody else. It hasn't actually given me any, any indication of who's come on for Portsmouth there. But they've made a sub. Let's see if we can... Oh, we've given the ball away with Lanez. That's poor from Lanez. And here come Portsmouth now. And Zhu doing some defensive work there. Very, very nice. He's putting himself about. Very Lapsley-esque the way he's running about here. And uh, he might not be the fastest Zhu. But he is very well rated in terms of his sort of technical ability, his passing uh, and stuff like that. So here comes uh, here come Cho, and it's actually Tariq Fosu who can find Lanez. Oh, how do you miss that? Lanez, how do you miss that? There's no way on earth that the Diego Lanez that I have come to know and love in this career mode would miss that chance. That is just a, a blip in a blip in the universe there. I don't know what's just happened. That was that was weird. Naylor puts a ball in there. And oh, it's punched away by Devin Phillips. It was an uncomfortable ball to deal with. And here comes Dennis. Dennis puts another ball in. It's away. Let's get this away. And we have knocked it up the pitch. Can we keep the ball? Here we can. It's Tariq Fosu to Colin Grant. We want the run from Lyle Taylor or somebody. They've actually got back in decent numbers here. Lanez now with the ball. Oh, and he's lost it again, Lanez. We're going to have to sub him off in a second. And we actually never got a chance to make the sub, but it doesn't matter because we've taken all three points at the Valley and the final score will read Cholton Athletic 3, Portsmouth 1. Very good result there. I don't care how low down Portsmouth are in the table. They're a dangerous team, a dangerous club, very good club. And we have taken all three points from them. Lanez, for me, didn't play brilliantly. Um, and I'm only saying that because of his miss. And, and in the last few minutes, he lost the ball a couple of times. But uh, other than that, he did a sound job, actually. He scored a goal for us as well, so I can't forget that. Grant and Fosu with the other goals. Dennis with the opener for Portsmouth. Really good result there. Let's have a look at the... Uh, the team ratings there. All right, so eight shots for Cholton, four on target, and we converted three of those on target. 51% possession, so we just edged them, but it was pretty much even in possession. Oh, it's just gone there from me. Uh, Portsmouth only managed four shots with three on target, and they outdone us on the uh, accuracy uh, in terms of shots and tackles as well. Let's have a look at the player ratings anyway. That's what we all care about. Grant with an 8.6. That is the kind of performance that I've wanted from Grant for a while now. I've been keeping the faith in him despite Vettichelli's incredible form. But yeah, Grant has finally repaid me with a really good goal and a really good performance for me. He also got an assist a few games ago. But yeah, uh, Zhu only got a 6, which is, uh, you know, it's all right for a player making his pretty much debut, uh, I suppose, for, for the first team senior. Uh, I think it actually might be his home debut. Forster Kasky, man of the match with a 9.1 rating. I believe he got an assist. Yes, he did. And another assist from Lyle Taylor there as well. And one from Deke still as well. That was the cross uh, for one of the goals as well. Lannis with an 8.2. Not bad. 9 for Fosu. Really, really good. Continuing his great form from uh, from February. And Jason Pierce and Oxford with an 8. 7.9 for Earl and 8.8 .8 for Deke still. 7.1 for Phillips. Again, goalkeeping is, is not an area where we're, we're outstanding. I like Phillips. But I think he's probably going to have to be replaced when we get to the championship, hopefully this season. Scunthorpe did lose, guys, which is great news for us. And actually, yes, I did miss Sunderland. It might have been a late kickoff. Sunderland won, which will probably put Sunderland top. Yes, it does. But finally, Charlton are in the automatic promotion places. We are second now on equal points with first. And only goal difference stands in our way. Still five goals worse off than Sunderland. But hopefully we can make the most of them. Um, hopefully getting a draw or a loss at some point And we can get all three points in our game. So we're finally in there guys. Now the job 
is to just stay in there and even overtake Sunderland. And it's just such a relief to see that because I was just worried that the same thing was going to happen over and over again. And we were just going to be stuck third all season and eventually have to play in the playoffs, which is not ideal because your season can either be incredibly exciting or crumble in front of you. And apparently Templeton grabs the February player of the month for the whole of the league. Anyway, we have some training drills now. Let's see if anybody's going to go up a rating. I pray that they do. And three of them do. Uh, Arebo up to a 71, Deke still up to a 71, and Lanez up to a 74. Guys, there are players in the Premier League that start for teams that are 74 rated. This guy is really, really coming on very strong. Everybody got A's, well, three A's there, a B and a C, which is really positive. Um, but yes, everybody doing very well in terms of the youth players growing their ratings. Our next game here is going to be against Burton Albion. We've got one notification in the office. It's Lewis Page who is concerned about the speculation. And I have to say, this is quite topical because we have Blackett coming in. We've already signed Earl and both of those guys are either already higher rated. In fact, they both are already higher rated. Um, or, or potentially even more potential. Earl's only 20 and he's already too higher rated than Page. So, uh, you know, I really like Page. I really do. But we needed cover. And when we got the cover, we might as well have got somebody hugely high rated. So, um, you know, potential wise. So, yeah, it's unfortunate that Page gets sort of outcasted here. But I hope that he will still remain and be, you know, a, a, a rotation player for us and he won't get too disgruntled. Maybe we'll have a look at giving him a new contract, I'm not sure. Um, but either way, first and foremost, let's get into this game against Burton Albion. Are we going to change? Oh, we are going to have to change this lineup due to fatigue a little bit. So let's see what we do. So we've changed the team around a little bit just to prevent too much fatigue and injuries and stuff like that from occurring. Burton Albion down here in eighth position. They are on 47 points, so that puts them about five, well, exactly five points out of the playoffs. They've got it all to play for here. A good little outfit relegated from the championship last season. Let's sim this game, and you can see we've made a few changes here. Solly Billet come in. Uh, Page comes in, who we were just talking about. Cullen comes in. Marshall comes in, as does Igor Veta Kelly. A few names like Reeves and stuff make the bench, and Solly rewards us with his selection. The number 20 scores a goal in the 15th minute, and he's not one for scoring too many goals, but he's he's come up with a probably very important one here for Sikaski. And there's Lyle Taylor doubling our lead. Of course, it's Lyle Taylor. They get an injury as well through Brayford. That's not what you want to see. Can we get a third goal? No, they pull one back. Actually, Turner, hopefully we can hold on to this. And we do. 90 minutes played. Cholton win again. 2-1 at the Valley against a decent outfit that is Burton Albion, Taylor, and Chris Solly with the goals. Very good stuff. So Sunderland managed to replicate our result again they did in fact win they are still leading the table they are on 76 points just like Charlton and we are 16 points clear of fourth but still breathing down our necks are Scunthorpe United one point behind and that is going to be guys where I end the episode off as we have a look as well at Lyle Taylor who is top goal scorer in the championship at the moment with 21 goals really really good return for him this season he's been absolutely our player of the season so far but anyway guys make sure you hit a like on this video make sure you hit the subscribe button as well if you haven't already and I will see you in episode 15 of the Chot on Athletic Career Mode alongside various other football and FIFA videos that will be coming out in the next few days and weeks so make sure you do take care of yourselves guys I'll see you in the next one and sweet